Greetings, 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 royal family. I'm back, you're back, we're back. Thanks for clicking on the video. All right, so Love and Hip Hop down in the ATL season 10 episode two. This is my recap, all right? Hopefully everybody watched the uh, the episode in its entirety before clicking on this video. If you didn't, it's all right. So the episode opens up, let's not waste any time, right? With Rashida and Kirk, okay? So they have a little one who is doing virtual learning. Kirk is asking little one, did you complete your eye ready? Shout out to all the parents who <laughs> make sure that your kid have all their eye ready minutes by the end of the week. Anyway, so there's drama at the bistro. What bistro? Kurt and Rashida have a restaurant in Atlanta called Frost Bistro, right? So there's drama. And I remember when they were building and everything was coming together for this bistro and they were thinking about hiring their kids. Um, and I thought it was a terrible idea. Fast forward, here we are. I just don't understand why the heck they have not only their sons working there. One is a manager. They have their son's girlfriends working there. Kurt's daughter, Kelsey, Chelsea, whatever the heck her name is. She's working there do too. The, the boy's girlfriends are working and they're beefing with each other. This is exactly why you should not have hired your children and then their girlfriends. It's stupid. So the restaurant, I feel like, is not the place for any sort of family dysfunction to be hashed out. Hire outside help, Kirk and Rashida. Later on in the episode, you see Kirk. He sits down with, uh, I don't know who it is, a manager, money manager, whatever. Whatever his title is. Bottom line is the bistro is in the red. And I feel that there is no one to blame but Kirk and Rashida. Your staff is a free-for-all. Why are they fighting in the dining area? You have put all of your money into this restaurant only for it to be a circus. Fire them damn kids. <laughs> you end up paying more when you try to cut corners. We are seeing that play out. Unless, unless there is method to this madness. We shall see. Moving along, Amaretta the Great. I had to, <laughs> I had to stall till I got to the next picture. Amaretta the Great. We're introduced to Amaretta the Great, right? She's a young rapper. Um, she's on the come up, you know, and she's looking for management. You know what I'm saying? She's not managed by anyone right now. The problem that she's running into is that a lot of these people are trying to make her look like the all the other female rappers in the game. That's not what she likes. She doesn't want to do the long lace front weave with the nails and the, and the coochie cutters and all of that foolishness. She is a tomboy. She says she has her own style. She wants to do it her way. Now, young baby Tate showed up who we were introduced to her last week. She showed up to her little meet and greet that, um, Amaretta the Great was having at the mall, it looked like. And they seem to genuinely like and support each other. And I'm hoping that they can remain cool and not be pitted against, not be pit against each other. You know how that goes. So this is young baby Tate. We saw her last week. She got some things going on with her. You know, she did her little South by Southwest concert. She got a little buzz. So she, she's doing her thing. So I like the camaraderie with the young girls. Um, I'm here for it. Why not? Moving along, Erica Mena. Now, Erica reveals that she's pregnant, bottom line, to her sister. Where the hell her sister come from? She said this is her oldest sister. I had no idea that she had a sister, whatever. So they're sitting in her bedroom, and she's chit-chatting, and she's talking to her sister, and she can't believe that she's pregnant. Um, she isn't excited because she feels that Safari might leave her, which leads me to believe that you are aware that he didn't want another child. So how did you end up pregnant? Just wondering. Anywho, I feel no sympathy for that home wrecker erica mena i'm good um uh, i don't believe anything that erica or safari that they display on on this reality soap ghetto soap opera at all but i'll play along you know what i'm saying after all it is a ghetto soap opera right so i'll, I'll play along now she kept this pregnancy from her sister is that what i'm gathering trust me i did not care to rewind so correct me if i'm wrong it seems like she kept this this pregnancy from her sister and in the scene, she's almost due, like she's what, three months away? And now she's unsure about all of this? Ma'am, this is gonna be your third child. <laughs> Knock it the hell off, okay? Knock it the hell off. This storyline, 
this storyline doesn't really suit Erica's brand, right? Like she's not some helpless wife and mother that's juggling her career and family all on her own while her husband is having a hard time coming to grips with fatherhood. Like that doesn't suit Erica Mena. I, yeah, I see what y'all trying to do, but I'm definitely not, not here for it. Um, nice try. Anyway, moving along back to young baby Tate and Amaretta. Okay. Amaretta is from Atlanta. She's an Atlanta native. Um, so she had a studio session. Young baby Tate showed up to show her girl some love. You know, they're, they're in the studio, you know, they're chopping it up. Amaretta, she reveals issues that she has with her mother who Amaretta feels, you know, was not there for her, you know, when her and her siblings were younger. Now, Amaretta made her mother her manager early in her own career, right? Ended up firing her mother, and there seems to be still some, you know, tension between Amaretta and her mom. So she ends up going to visit her mama, and her mama is upset at the fact that she got to find out, you know, how her daughter is doing via social media, like Instagram. So it seems like she's not really that close with her mom any longer right now Amaretta put out a diss track about her mama and you know her mother's like you don't write a diss track about your mama at first I said there has to be a reason behind this and ma'am you are lucky <laughs> that that's all she did anyway so what's the cause of all this drama right with Amaretta and her mama over a man a piece of man y'all so Amaretta says that her mother put a man before her children and her mother's toxic relationship affected her and her siblings. <sighs> Here we go. Armoretta said that the man, you know, that her mother was dating made her mother mistreat her own children. And she chose that man over her kids. Woo-wee. <sighs> so her mother is mad at Armoretta's experience. And the mother is denying it. You know, she's not admitting to any of the things that Amaretta experienced as a child. Like I said, her mama is lucky. All Amaretta did was make a diss record. That man was abusive, according to Amaretta. And the mama tried to glaze over that in this scene. They were, you know, at Amaretta's mother's house. So they were sitting out back talking. And her mother tried to glaze over that whole that man putting his hands on her in front of her kids. She tried to glaze over that and blame Armoretta by saying that she was spoiled. And the only reason why she was angry is because she didn't have a dad. This is what Armoretta's mother is telling her daughter who is expressing to her the issues that she had with her when she was younger. I'm trying to keep my cool. I'm trying to hold my mule y'all. Cause if you have been following me for some time, you know how I feel about this type of nonsense. And I'm just sitting there watching this and I'm saying what in the entire insert expletive here. So Amaretta's father passed away, right? One year after she was born. This is what Amaretta is saying in her confessional. And the mama said that she ain't gonna ever admit to putting a man that she was dealing with before her, ki her kids. So they might as well move on. This is what the mother said. I'm a reticist. If you're listening somehow, I would advise you, young lady, that you keep your distance from your mama. You know, you express to her what you need to move forward. You know, how can we move past this? This is what the mother asks. Amaretta wants to move past this. Well, the mother says, well, I ain't going to admit none of that. I ain't going to admit none of that, so you might as well move on. And the mother is laughing like, damn, dog, I lost a daughter. Amaretta, you got to keep your distance from your mama. You express to her what you need to move forward, and she ain't admitting to anything. So there's your answer right there. Trying to change her mind is only going to cause further emotional distress. And this pisses me off. These kids don't ask to be here and you choose a piece of man over your children. And when Armoretta is expressing that to you, you tell her you ain't admitting to nothing. So you would rather have a piece of man who put hands, feet, and ass on you over your children. And where is that man at now? Hmm? He got tired of going oops upside your head and you subject your children to seeing this toxic behavior and you're upset 
because she made a diss song about you, you are lucky that that's all that little girl has done. She has every right to express her horrible experience in that home with you, her siblings, and that piece of man that you put before your children. I can't stand women who do stuff like that. I can't stand women who, well, eh, she ain't got no man. Good. I, I don't think a lot of women want a whole bunch of different men around their kids. And this is exactly why. You did not vet this individual and you allowed this individual to put hands and feet on you in front of your children and you chose your children. You chose that man before your children. You're trash. And I mean that respectfully. Moving along, Kurt and Rashida call a meeting. Now this is not the image, okay, that was in this scene, but this is all I could find online, all right? So Kurt and Rashida, it is staff meeting time. I just want to know why are the son, their son's girlfriends working at the bistro? Like, there, there doesn't need to be a long, drawn-out meeting. You know, people like to waste time, I see. All right? We on borrow time. You want to waste your time, you go right on ahead. It is what it is. So Kurt's daughter says that the girlfriends are interfering between her and her brother's relationship, her brother's girlfriends, right? Uh, the restaurant basically is in the red, like I said before. They are losing money. And Kurt said that he and Rashida emptied their bank account to start this business. And they are talking about who's capping. There is surveillance footage of the girls fighting in the dining area. Okay? <laughs> like, are we serious? <laughs> if y'all trying to go bankrupt Kurt and Rashida, just say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Look. Then I thought about it. Okay, well, this drama might be good for business because some people love drama like, you know, in real life and they may want to visit the restaurant to see some ish go down, right? Not me. You know what I'm saying? To eat, you want to do that? That's on you. Make sure you report about it on Instagram. Talk about it. Do a video or something like that to let the rest of us know if everything was copacetic down at the bistro. I don't want hood rats bickering over my bacon, so I'll pass, okay? Now, after watching this scene where Rashida expressed her frustration and Kirk Jr., who's the manager, he walks off and Kirk goes and talks to him on top of the roof, you know, in a dramatic scene, that, that was good, you know? So Kirk and Rashida actually have a storyline, something going on. Um, but after watching this scene, I wonder if they're working on a spinoff, right? That actually could work. That could work. Frost Bistro, that could be a spinoff right on VH1. Why the heck not? I would watch because I, I like Kirk and Rashida. You know what I'm trying to say? So that would be interesting. And I noticed that Kelsey and also I think his name is, is his name Kirk Jr., Lil Kirk, whatever Kirk's son, Kirk and Rashida's, Kirk and Rashida's son's name is or Kirk's son, whoever kid it is. He had a confessional as well. So I said, oh, now Kelsey has had a confessional before, Right. Chelsea, Kelsey, whatever the heck her name is, uh, Kurt's daughter. She's been in confessionals in previous seasons. And now the uh, Kurt, their son, who's the manager of the restaurant, he got a little confessional. So it made me think, like, I wonder if they are gearing up for a spinoff. They want to kind of test the audience to see if we're interested in this Frost Bistro drama. This could be good for business. But again... I don't want a whole bunch of, uh, uh, you know, like I said, hood rats bickering over my bacon. Or if I go to brunch, y'all swag surfing over my French toast. I'm good. I'll pass. But I wish them nothing but the best. But they got to focus on a strategy to get them out of the red. Okay? Because uh, <laughs> the restaurant business is really, really tough. And they have a lot of competition. Everybody's opening up restaurants down in the Georgia. Okay? So that's it. That's all. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. Drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think. Did you see the episode? What do you think about the episode? Are you buying Erica Mena's story? Do you even care? What do you think about a possible Frost Bistro spinoff reality show? It could work. Even if it's for one season, it definitely could work. And it could be used as a business strategy to promote the restaurant. I'm here for it. I'll tune in. All right, Royal Family, thanks for joining me for this review. I'm signing off. And as always, until next time, folks, peace.